Hi, I'm Stan Kutcher, and behind me is uh, my hood. Uh, it's Herring Cove Village, uh, an important uh, part of the history of Nova Scotia. It was originally a fishing settlement, and you can see here the, the houses and the fishing sheds scattered around the waters of the cove itself. Um, it's uh, a place where the transatlantic cable has actually comes into Canada. Very important for that reason. And I want to show you a little bit about the history of the cove. Because history is important. The history of ourselves, our families, our communities is important. So I'm going to show you a little bit about the history here. And I hope that you will be able to look more deeply at the history of who you are and where you are. I want to show you another angle towards this cove. It, it was uh, settled in about 1750, so quite a while ago. And why did people choose this place? Well, because of its wonderful sheltered anchorage. It was, as you know, a little fishing village. At its height, it had about 25 ships, commercial fishing ships here. Um, so uh, come with me and uh, I'll show you a little bit about what this cove is like. So here we are on, on the rocky shore at the entrance to Herring Cove Harbor. Uh, you see out there the wide Atlantic, uh, the ship in the distance. This is the shipping lane for every vessel that comes into the Halifax Harbor, comes steaming past here. Behind me is the entrance to the cove. It's a fairly narrow, narrow, narrow entrance and um, uh, it sweeps in over here and then into a long, narrow body of water that is completely sheltered from the horrific storms that can come up here in the North Atlantic. So a safe haven for people who fish. I'm standing at the monument in Hebridean Park to the tragic loss of a pilot boat and nine men uh, in March of 1940. Um, Herring Cove was a village that pilots people who bring ships into the harbor mostly lived and the pilot boats that bring the pilot to the ship so that they can bring the ship safely in and out of the harbor are a really important part of this whole movement of ships and goods and supplies into the port of Halifax. One night tragically uh, a, a large ship ran into a pilot boat that had nine men on it. All nine men perished. Uh, huge loss of life huge tragedy for the cove. This monument here remembers those people and also shows the importance of the pilot to bring a boat safely in and out of the harbor. On our walk, we have a chance to see the cove in a slightly different uh, angle. You see the narrowness of the entrance here, protection from the sea. Uh, the Mi'kmaq uh, were here first, of course, uh, and they called this area Magupchukuk. Uh, we don't know whether there was a permanent settlement here. There may have been. It certainly was a wonderful place to settle. Um, and as I said, it wasn't until the 17, early 1750s, late 1740s, that the European settlers arrived and set up a fishing village here in Herring Cove. So uh, another view of the entrance to the harbor showing how wonderfully safe and protected this cove is. So part of the way to where we're going it meanders through a narrow path uh, through the forest at the edge of the ocean. Uh, if you're quiet you'll hear the waves lapping and maybe the gulls calling to each other. Uh, so come on with me as we continue up the path. Now, the sea can be extremely dangerous and um, in 1797 uh, a ship uh, coming into the Halifax Harbor hit the shoals just off of Herring Cove in, in, in the middle of a big storm. And um, the ship was first seen by a 13-year-old boy called Joe Cracker. And he alerted the residents, he jumped into his dory and rowed out uh, against all these odds and, and rescued two people and then brought them back. And that night, 12 uh, people were rescued from a crew uh, and passengers of 250. So only 12 survived. Uh, but this monument um, celebrates the heroism of young Joe Cracker, 13 years old, out in his dory on a mission. So in the last uh, part of this uh, visit to my hood, uh, I'm taking you to a little hidden away cemetery. Uh, pretty well every community has one of these and, and the cemetery can tell you a story of who was here 
long before you were. And sometimes those stories are really, really tragic. Like some of the stones here identify when waves of infectious diseases came through and probably wiped out many of the young children in the community. Diseases that we don't have anymore because of vaccinations. Other stones show you how difficult it was during childbirth because the name and age and date of death of the mother and of the child are together. So go back, find these little gems in your community and learn about what the stones can tell you or your community's history can tell you so that you become a more informed and better engaged member of your own community. Thank you for taking the time to visit my home.